Good morning. Welcome again to Bethany Says Reform Presbyterian Church as we come together here on Monday morning to go through our First Corinthians lesson. And of course, we are about four weeks of being done. Now, when we get down to First Corinthians, we're going to take a break for the rest of the year and start fresh on January 1st. And if there's a particular book of the Bible you want to walk through, just let me know. We'd be glad to do that as we continue these verse-by-verse -verse studies on Monday mornings. But today, we're in 1 Corinthians 16, verses 1 through 4. So as we come to the Lord in his mercy, let us come first in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give thanks again for this day and this time, but we especially give thanks for the opportunity you provide for us to come into your house and be blessed by the testimony of your truth. And so as we hear your word this morning and as you encourage us, may you strengthen our understanding of our own walk with you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So this morning, again, we're in 1 Corinthians 16, verses 1 through 4. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given orders to the churches of Galatia, so you must do also. On the first day of the week, let each one of you lay something aside, storing up as he may prosper, that there may be no collections when I come. And when I come, whomever you approve by your letters, I will send to bear your gift to Jerusalem. But if it is fitting that I go also, they will go with me. So <clears throat> here we have the first, well, not first, but uh, one of the, <coughs> excuse me, clearest examples of taking up an offering on the Lord's Day. Now, let's backtrack a little bit. The heart of what Paul is talking about here is how it is the church takes up funds for the poor. This is not geared towards building maintenance or the pastor's salary or things of that nature. Paul here is specifically talking about missions giving. Now, we can take from that and apply it out and see that it is normal in the Corinthian church for money to be taken up on Sunday. And there would be offerings for the pastor's salary and for the uh, maintenance of the building and for local needs. But this is primarily talking about foreign missions. And so we have early example of foreign missions being primarily about the benevolence needed to help the poor in the church in another place. Paul spends a lot of time in this book and other books talking about the unity of the body, the way the church, the Lord Jesus Christ, is gathered together in love. Now, one of the things that we must deal with from time to time is how are we supporting missions outside of our local church? In some ways, it's easier to support missions that are overseas because you don't actually have to get your hands dirty. You just send money and know that somebody else is doing the work. And it's good that they're doing the work. But another aspect of what Paul is laying out here in verse 16 is motivation. One of the reasons why he tells them to make preparation is so that when he comes, they don't just give because they feel guilted into it. You see, preparation testifies to a desire and a hope and a love in all areas of life. If you love your wife, you prepare for her. The bride is prepared for her wedding day, both in real life and by the Lord Jesus Christ, as we heard from Revelation 21 yesterday morning. And so this idea, again, of free will offering is something that's going to pop up in 2 Corinthians. In the book of Acts, a cheerful giver. This testimony, again, that the desire of God in all things is not that we would do things because we have to, but that we would do things because we want to, we desire to, we love to. It is the natural activities of a Christian heart. It's something we don't even think twice about. You know, that's the nature, especially of money in the church. People get squirrely about it, but one of the things that should always humble us and keep us in mind of why it is we're doing things is that it's not our money, it's the Lord's money. We're stewards of the Lord's money. And when we give it to the church, we're even double stewards of the Lord's money. Because every blessing we have comes to us, not by the work of our hands, but by the grace of our glorious Savior. He 
is the one who has provided these things. And so we're merely passing along the financial resources that we have been gifted unto others, that they might receive that gift and be blessed. In Jesus in Matthew chapter 6, when he's talking about the sins of the Pharisees, talks about the kind of offering and giving that has the left hand not knowing what the right hand is doing. And that's, again, part of what's in the heart of the Apostle Paul here. Again, concerning the collection of the saints, as I'm giving orders to the Church of Galatians, must you do also. Again, Paul here is saying, look, I'm not asking you to do something I didn't ask anybody else to do. You're not special in that regard. However, every gift that we give is special. Because it is an act of love. It is an act of witness under the care of our brethren. You know, there's a lot of talk nowadays about neighbors and strangers and things of that. But we are reminded here in the scriptures that our primary concern should be brothers in the church, fellow Christians, meeting the needs of those who are our family members. That doesn't mean we don't take care of strangers and don't take care of neighbors. But again, our focus is upon the kingdom of God, upon that which is ours to protect, to watch over, and of course, to steward. And so these are some of the things that Paul wants us to think about here in 1 Corinthians 16. Again, the the last thing that we'll note here in verse 2 is that it's on the first day of the week. Why the first day of the week? Well, it's because it's the Lord's day. That's the Sabbath day in the New Testament. That is the day of worship. That's the day of glory. That's the day where we as followers of Christ gather together to praise his name. So what better time to give offerings unto the Lord than on the day that we celebrate the greatest offering that was ever given, the perfect God-man, Jesus Christ, who came, was born of the Virgin, lived a perfect life, died a perfect death, rose a perfect resurrection for our transgressions to, to see that we be justified before the Lord of glory. This is our shouting testimony of love for our brethren. It is the way we use those resources God has given to us. Not just financial, but all the things that we do to support one another in Christ. Again, may the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you, and give you peace. Take care, and God bless.